Today on People with Passion for Pets, we talk to Jana Deverox. Jana is a clinical pet nutritionist and an herbalist, and she is also the director of nutrition and wellness for Bow Wow Labs. Hi, Jana. Mm-hmm. Hello. <laughs> Hi, thank you for having me today. Yes, thank you, and welcome to People with Passion for Pets. So, Jana, you are the Director of Nutrition and Wellness for a company called Bow Wow Labs. And I was on your website and you guys have some really cool products, uh, primarily one that I thought was really cool called the Bully Buddy. Yes, the Bully Buddy is our um, initial innovative product that actually created, well, we created the company around this. It's um, a safety device that was designed to help dogs to eat their favorite long-term chew, which is a bully stick, without having a potential choking hazard or intestinal obstruction for the last one inch, because a lot of dogs, as you know, when they get down to something and they no longer have that tactile ability, they end up putting it in their mouth and potentially swallowing it. So the inventor of the Bully Buddy actually had an experience like that with his dog, and he decided there had to be a better way to feed a bully stick. And he had done all of this research online, and the best thing that he found a old vice grip. And the eureka moment happened where he realized there's no way I'm going to allow my dog to have metal in his mouth or near his mouth because that's like a prime recipe for breaking a tooth. And lo and behold, um, this is our second series. The first design um, we had, which was a great design, but it didn't work for dogs of all sizes. So we now have um, this lovely shape, which allows dogs to put their paws on top. The bully stick goes inside. Uh, You screw it down. And once you screw it down, you can't pull it out and the dog can't pull it out. And so this is in six sizes and it is just an amazing product that has actually brought bully sticks back into my own dog's lives. So they're very happy about that. (laughs) Yeah. You know, and I can so um, relate to that because we have um, two dogs and when they get to that very end, I really, really watch them like a hog and I'm like, okay, out that, you know, give it back. And Um, Our old dog, Jaeger, he would just really quickly like chomp it up and try to swallow it really quickly. So I can certainly relate to that. And I think that's a great, great product. Yeah. And when that happens, you know, you end up doing that. Let's cross our fingers and hope and pray that nothing happens, right? That it comes out in their poop, (laughs) right? Because once they swallow it, it's out of your control. You can't really Mm -hmm. um, try to get them to regurgitate it. So Mm -hmm. uh, this really does bring peace of mind. And like I said, it's brought bully sticks back. So I've always taught for dogs to chew because in the wild, that's how they clean their teeth. They can't just run down to the vet. And I've always been a proponent of raw hides and bully sticks and stuff like that. And it had gotten to a point where we had stopped it because of exactly what what B was saying is when you go to take the stick there, they would inhale it. And a couple of times it was scary. I would recommend people get a such a large bone that they could not actually chew it all the way down, you know, get one with the knuckles or stuff like that. And then I I saw your product and I thought that's the coolest thing in the world because you don't have to worry about it anymore. I mean, you give them the bone and go, you can go down into the, to the nub and that's it. You know, it's, it's a really great idea. Well, in long-term, you both know this, are so beneficial to dogs, right? So besides providing a way for of oral health, it strengthens the jaw muscle. It provides them with mental stimulation as well. And the act of chewing itself actually releases dopamine and serotonin. So it really helps reinforce calmness and happiness in the dog. So long-term chews should always be part of a dog's regimen um, as long as you can do it safely. So to your point, as long as you can do it safely, every dog should do it. It's really a great product and that you have multiple sizes. Right. So we, this is uh, the size for like oh, a little chihuahua. That. And then we have all the way up to a size oh, for a great day. Look at that. Yeah. So, you know, this would be for dogs over a hundred pounds. And then we have every size in between. Most yeah. dogs usually fit in the medium or the large size. Um, but it, it's, I have to be honest with you. I feel as a pet parent, I cannot believe that I gave bully sticks as long as I did without one of these safety devices. And when I, when it did click, this was not an invention at that point in time. So I just took them away completely. And I, you know, supplemented with other type of raw frozen bones. Um, But 
everyone likes a little bit of variety, right? You want different things for different reasons. So this is a really great way. Um, what dog doesn't like a bully stick, right? So this is a really great way <laughs> to bring the dog's favorite chew back into their life. Some dogs don't like raw bones, which is crazy to me, though most of the raw bones, it's because they're they're too cold, right? A lot of people put them mm-hmm. in the freezer and then yeah. they take them out. It hasn't been thawed, but um, yeah. bully sticks are usually hands down a winner. And that's what exactly exactly what we did is we went to uh, we would tell our clients frozen bones because they couldn't it, it would keep them uh, it would keep them occupied for a term, and yet they couldn't swallow it. They couldn't break it into pieces and stuff like that. The opportunity is that then you would lose the cleaning ability of the bully stick or the rawhide or something like that, where it gets pliable and it actually cleans their teeth and keeps their gum healthy, as obviously you know. So it, it really covers a lot of bases. But there are, yeah. I will say there are some frozen bones like neck bones um, that allows the dogs to chew them in entirety. So any non-weight bearing bone can actually been eaten, can be eaten in its entirety. And so if you're looking at like a, a beef neck bone, it's pretty large and there, it actually does give you the same uh, mechanical aspect oh. of the brushing. So there are some out there, just the idea of the biomechanics of how the mouth moves. If they're scraping it along the bone, it is giving them some oral benefit. Mm. Um, but again, you know, depending on what type of bone you're giving, if you have a dog that only likes marrow bones, well, you can only give so many marrow bones at a time, right? Because there's just so much fat that you could potentially give some GI upset. So it's nice to have the variety. Yeah. And like you said, I mean, I I have never seen a dog that doesn't love a bully stick. Now, I also noticed that on your website, you then um, kind of sell bully sticks. and, And that is because obviously you have these different sizes now it's nice to have bully sticks that fit into your bully buddy. Right. Because we have such a large variety of the six sizes, what we've done is we actually hand select and sort all of the bully sticks for you to make sure that they're, not, that they're nice and straight and that they're going to fit each individual size. So we call them our safe fit bully sticks because we can ensure you that the bully sticks that we're selling will safely fit your individual size. Um, bully buddy. So if you were to just go to the store and get a bag of, you know, brand XYZ that had 10 sticks in it, only maybe potentially eight of those sticks would actually fit the bag because of natural deviation of the, Mm -hmm. of the product. Right. And so if it doesn't fit, then the question becomes, do you give it to your dog or do you throw it away? And most people will end up giving it to their dog, which means you've now exposed them again to that potential for intestinal obstruction or choking. So the safe fit bully stick kind of gets cuts through the guesswork you know that every stick that's in the bag as long as you buy the right bag for your size bully buddy which it's really easy to do um will fit so there's no no contemplating throwing money away (laughs) no yeah and you know these bully sticks there aren't cheap so (laughs) (laughs) don't necessarily want to throw them away but i do like the idea especially if you have smaller dogs you know i can see and and you know i always because we always had three different sizes of dogs we you know got a hundred pound Chesapeake Bay Retriever all the way down to a 10 pound Jack Russell Terrier. So yeah, just like you were saying, you buy this bag of bully sticks, some are small, some are large, some have an end that is really big. So I I do love the idea that, you know, you can specifically know, okay, hey, I got a small dog, so I'm going to get smaller bully sticks and they'll be able to fit into the bully buddy. So that's, that's just great. Makes a lot of sense. So let's cover the, the bag then. So if, if I have a, a bully buddy that I know fits my dog, would it mat- how do I match the bag with the bully buddy? Is it like a numbering system? So on the web, yep. So on the website, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it, but so we have a color system. So each of the different bully buddies oh. have a different color. So a large okay. is gonna be red and then you have a turquoise and you have a purple or you have an orange. So besides having the sizes, um, you just basically buy according to the color. That's perfect. You that is awesome. Them. So it makes it really easy for you. And then of course we have an amazing customer service team. So if for any reason you have an issue, you know, you can just online chat with them and they'll answer all your questions and take care of it and okay. help you however I can. So. And that's great. So people can um, go directly to your website, which is bowwowlabs.com. Is that right? Yes, it is. Okay. And then um, you just have online ordering and, and shipping, and but you also have somebody that could answer 
potentially questions. Yep, so we are uh, primarily in e-commerce, though we have uh, recently been uh, going into some retail stores. So if, if you're supporting a small local business, I would recommend you go into your local store and ask them to carry our products because that would be a nice way to support local. Um, but otherwise you can come on to our bowwowlabs.com and you can see the Bully Buddy, the uh, Safe at Bully Sticks and some of the other products that we've actually come out with recently, which are equally exciting and fun. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the other products? So um, we also have these lovely little treats called the Waggy Wafers. So these are um, like little cylinders. I love these for training. I am a big fan of, I say pay out my dog. When my dog does something that I want them to do, I pay them out. And so I love the fact that these are in the shapes of coins because it just kind of <laughs> satisfies That's my very brain. cute. Yeah, so we have um, three flavors. It's turkey, pumpkin, salmon, and organic chicken. They're all made in the USA. They all have limited ingredients. Um, they're all high in protein. Um, which is a great treat that you can break up in half really easily. If you put it in your pocket, you don't have to worry about that dust that happens when you tend to put treats in your pockets. And then we just came out with the Crunch Puffs. And Crunch Puffs are um, an amazing, great long-term treat. So when I say a long-term treat, it's different than a chew. A chew is going to last about 15 plus minutes. A crunch puff is going to probably last you anywhere between 45 seconds, to like two or three minutes, depending on the size of your dog. And what it is, it's just a single ingredient um, treat that we have a proprietary baking method about, and it puffs up the um, protein and allows for this amazing crunch that I tell everyone, if your, do your dog is going to love it, but you might love it more because you get to hear that audio response of your dog crunch, crunch, crunching. Mm. Most treats that you give your dog, it's like a one crunch and then it's gone. And you're like, huh. And then you go, do I give them a one or no, that's too much for the caloric intake. So this allows both of you to enjoy the experience. So this is a great product too. That comes in that's three awesome. sizes and is also available on our website. Now that's kind of interesting. I've never even thought about the crunch part of it. Uh, you know, the, because you do, you, you, when you give a treat to your dog, it's crunch and gone. It's like, well, that was anti everything, right. you know? <laughs> so my, that's exactly what it is. So my 88 pound dog, it takes him about 45 seconds to get through and it's constant loud crunching the entire time. It is so satisfying for me <laughs> as a pet parent. I love it. I feel like I've spent good money right? If it takes, if a good treat takes a little bit longer, I, I'm happy. He's happy. My little girl loves them too. Um, she's just a super aggressive chewer. So she's half his size and it takes her like, you know, 30 seconds versus wow. is. So she goes looking to see if there's any crumbs and he's not done yet. <laughs> That's funny. So what are the ingredients? I know you said a proprietary baking, but what are the ingredients in the, the crunch? So it is a bully stick. Oh, that really? We have, um, yeah. So it's all the same um, nutritional values, high in protein, low in fat. Um, and we just have a proprietary baking method that we actually allowed us, um, to crunch up and puff up the bully stick. And I thought I had an open bag. I will open one so you can see what they look like. Cause they're really neat. I think I might've left it over near my dog. So I might be driving them a little bit. crazy. <laughs> right now. This is what it looks like. Oh, okay. That is so cool. you can see in comparison to a regular bully stick. I see yeah. what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. And it's super crunchy. I don't know if I can. Ooh, That's the crunch. <laughs> That's a break. And then they crunch. That's cool. It's like popcorn. I'm looking over my thing. shoulder. Just I look over my shoulder to see if I'm gonna get harassed by my dogs for these things. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, we might need a demonstration when one comes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you mentioned your dogs. So tell us a little bit about your dogs. So I have two American Staffordshire mixes. Uh, they're both rescue dogs. Um, my boy is just about 10 and a half now. And I met him when he was three days old. I was volunteering at an animal oh. shelter and we had, uh, his mom was dropped off. And two weeks after her being at the shelter, she gave birth. So I met Diego, that's my boy's name, when he was three days old. And it was like an instant connection. So I feel like I am his surrogate mom, literally, because I've known him almost his entire life. Um, he is the, he's, my heart dog. He's the one that changed the trajectory of my life. I went from being in a, um, a sector in the world where I was dealing in finance and Diego came home with me and I thought everything was going to be great and easy. And I was just going to feed the food that the vet told me and everything was going to be blissful. And then reality hit. And I realized that he was having rashes and we were at the vet almost every month because of ear infections and X, Y, and Z. 
And so I'm also an herbalist. So I started thinking, wait a second, what am I doing? Well, nutrition is the foundation for everything. Why am I not thinking about this with my own dog. So mm-hmm. I started going down the road of learning as much as I could about the canine body and about um, the nutrients that they need, what the, how their bodies were designed, how they're supposed to eat. Um, and it really, I, I um, quit my job essentially closed down my business, opened up a little pet boutique and supply store and be, and took the courses to become a clinical pet nutritionist. So without him, I would never be here. And I am blessed every day to help dogs um, from a nutritional standpoint. And then I have my little girl, Lola, who's going to be seven in August. And she was my only foster. And she was the fastest foster fail, I think in history. <laughs> we, um, I rescued her when she was six and a half weeks old. She was about two and a half pounds. And I was supposed to foster her and bring her back into proper, a uh, proper nutritional place. Um, she was very malnourished and pretty much we didn't even last a night. Um, Diego decided he needed a little sister. My husband and I decided we needed another dog and the rest is history. So <laughs> That's awesome. How cool. Yeah, I'm very lucky, very blessed. And so the, the fact that you're you're into the nutrition is really important for the animals out. People don't realize that it's a lot of it is environment, but most of it is ingestion because ingestion can fight the rash from the inside out. Right. Well, so nutrition is really the foundation to good health right? It's, it's one of the three pillars, you know, you have nutrition, you have exercise and you have mental, uh, mental capacity, the stimulation. And so for me, you know, I am a huge advocate of investing in our dog's wellness, not their sickness. So I'd rather spend the extra money investing in the food that, um, satisfies how their dog, how the body, the canine body is designed to eat. And it's not designed to eat the way the commercial marketplace wants you to think it is. And so what you end up seeing is as soon as you make some switches and I, you know, I don't judge people, not everyone can afford to feed them the, the optimal way you should be feeding a dog. So it's really what, what's right within your budget. How can we improve the nutrition? How can we add some whole food, um, some whole raw food if possible. And when I say raw, I don't just necessarily mean meat. I mean, you know, can we get some blueberries? Can we get some spirulina? Can we get some other types of supplements that's going to provide them with additional nutrition? And so what ends up happening is that people take small steps. And when they start taking these small steps, suddenly they start to see big changes. And then they say, what else can I do? And it's a journey. And as the, as the, the, the humans start to realize that it does make such a great impact, you see that they end up making even larger changes from a nutrition standpoint for their dogs. And then sometimes even for themselves, because let's be honest, we don't eat necessarily well as a human species either. Right. So, and the thing that I can say is that, you know, dogs are carnivores, humans are omnivores, and we have to think differently just because we can eat something. It doesn't mean that a dog can. And so, you know, um, there's a lot of confusion on the internet. Um, I, I'm, I hate to say it, but there's a lot of bad information on the internet. So just do your due diligence. Um, and if you can find someone that has the knowledge to help you so that you're not navigating the journey on your own. It, it, there is a lot on trend that happens in the human sector first that then we start to look at our beloved animals. Um, and I think what's important is that you kind of recognize um, that each dog is an individual. So if you have two dogs in your house, yes, it may be convenient to feed them both the same thing, but that may not be possible. And so if it's not possible, then you have to accept that because otherwise you're contributing potentially to um, a dis-ease in the body or inflammation in the body or um, you know, itchiness or dry skin or dry coat or you know, um, whatever it may be. And so it's really just having an open mind and just remembering that just because one dog is fine on a food, that doesn't mean that your other dog is going to be fine on the food. Just like if you have one German shepherd that can eat chicken and one German shepherd that can't, it doesn't mean all German shepherds can't. And, you know, I will say this, um, dogs that have behavioral issues, I feel a lot of times when you look at the food, and this is to your point, Jim, the, what you do when you start looking at the ingredients, a lot of the foods that they're eating have preservatives, they have artificial dyes, they have colorants in them. And those are all things that can directly impact the brain. 
So you start thinking there really is a connection between behaviors and nutrition and how can you help to kind of clean it up to help the dog push through behavioral patterns. And it works the same for humans. If you put a human spin on it, if I have caffeine, I know the difference. I mean, people know me by my Mountain Dew and I can't have a Mountain Dew after 12 o'clock or I'd flap like a fish in bed all night. So it, I, I totally understand it. And it's hard for humans. Sometimes we, we can't put that same thing on our dogs. And um, it's, it's kind of interesting when we talk to our clients, I try to put it in a way that it makes sense to them and financially seems to work because sometimes we will tell them, if you put your investment into your food, you'll invest less in your veterinarian visits. And it's not against veterinarians, but I think veterinarians should be when your dog has broken a leg or something, not so much for you know, rashes and stuff like that. Try, try from the inside and work out. You know? No, I, I, I couldn't have said it any better. I 100% agree with what you just said. I, I, I mean, I personally take my dogs to the vet maybe once a year and it's for a wellness visit. You know, I get their exactly. blood checked just because that's a really good indicator to see what's going on. Um, yeah. But every time we go in there, I, my vet's like, just keep doing what you're doing because they're amazing. I mean, my dog is 10 and a half. He still runs around on the beach like he's five years old. And he had two cranial cruciate ligament surgeries when he was one and one and a half. So oh his body is like a true specimen of seeing. I wish he was like up and not sleeping right now, but it is their nap time. Um, but he, it's like a true, he's a true specimen of the canine body. Like you can see all the muscles, you can see how well their bodies work when it's fed, right. When they're exercised, right. And when they are just fulfilled in every way, right. I train my dogs every day. I'm not saying that I train them as it like what you guys do, but every time we're out on a walk, I am mentally engaging with them, right. I am reinforcing a good behavior. I am correcting in a positive way, something that I don't want. So they are constantly being stimulated in what I feel is a very positive way. And then, you know, they get the great food and the great nutrients and it just, it supports optimal health. So it's not just one over the other. Um, it really is an all encompassing um, way of thinking. And that's the way we go too. I mean, you're, you always training your dog, even if you like right now you're training, you just don't have to do anything. You know, so you're always training and, and that's what you're looking for. It's, you know, people look at our dogs and go, why don't they do this? You know, these bad behaviors is like, well, from the time they're up and around, we're making sure, like you said, you, you're, you're focused on do this or don't do that or whatever. And it, they love that, that mental stimulation. Most of our dog training that we do is not really dog training. It's behavior modification. And it's, it's getting the human to understand how your dog works or, you know, the dog says, let's go do something. And that's the training that you do. When you go for a walk, you don't have to run five miles. It's just look at your dog and say, how you doing? That's training right there, you know? Right. Getting them yeah. to check in with you. That is a huge exactly. thing that I, I don't see very many people do. And I do it regularly because you never know when that look, right? When you ask them to look at you and check in with you, when you're going to need that, if there's stimulus ahead that you don't exactly. want them paying attention to, if you need to redirect them. Um, I'm yeah. a big advocate of what you guys do. And it sounds like you are yeah. what I do. So it's a good marriage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you know, um, that has been always our mission and what we love to do and why we do uh, the YouTube channel and why we wrote the book is because we want to encourage people to have fun with their dogs and to go out and have the dog be part of their life. And when we um, when we used to train dogs and now that we travel with our dogs, we oftentimes uh, get into these conversations and people will say, oh, it's so cool that you've got your dog out here with you on the, the dog friendly patio or, you know, on this hike, but I can't take my dog because it's just too much work. And that's where we realize, you know, when your dog doesn't understand how you want him to behave in certain situations, now it's too much work and then the dog loses out because the dog stays at home and but the person loses out too and that's always our first conversation is where we say why did you get the dog in the first place you didn't get the dog so that he could stay in the rv camper and bark all day while you were going out and have a dinner right. right you you got the dog because you thought he'd be part of your life and that's what we want for people is to to give them that way to to make that dog part of the family and part of everything that they do if, if possible and i i completely subscribe to that my dogs are my kids and I love them and they love me. And I think every day that I have with them is a gift. Um, and I don't think they're with us long enough to 
um, spend a lot of time away from them. So I take nothing for granted when it comes to my babies and they are my babies. And, you know, yeah, my yeah. husband sometimes says that they get more attention than he does, <laughs> but I don't really know. I'm, <laughs> sorry. I'm not going down that path, <laughs> but we you know. understand. Absolutely. Yeah. But mm -hmm. anyway, oftentimes Jim will say we just sit somewhere and he goes, isn't it so neat that all our dogs want to do is they just want to be with us, you know, and how, how cool is that? Yeah. That, we're, that we, are, yeah. we are enough, right? As we are, whatever state of mind that we're in, like we are enough for them just to be by their side. And, you know, one of the things that I, when I say I never take them for granted, you know, I take them for walks twice a day because I really, I really do um, live what I preach. Like I'm that person. So they get two walks a day. It's at minimum five miles a day. And you know, they get everything that I, that I tell people to do and I'll be out on a walk and I will just have, they have that sixth sense. And I don't mean like that. Ooh, sixth sense. I mean like the true sixth sense, which is they can sense things that are 50 feet away, a hundred feet away. Like they have that energetic ability to feel things. And I feel it's something that we as humans have lost. So it's an interesting thing to almost try to get in touch with them in a different way, because they really can teach us so much. If we open our eyes to it, dogs can, besides giving us unconditional love, they can teach us how to be better humans. And that to me is like the most amazing thing ever. So, and another reason why I give so much to them, because it's a reciprocal relationship. And it's just one of the yeah. reasons why we actually wrote the book is because we said um, years ago when Jim and I first got married, we would take trips without our dogs. And but we would be at a beach and then we'd both look at it and go, What's oh, we wish we had the dogs or, you know, <clears throat> they would. Be, yeah. And so that's when we started realizing, why are we doing this? We could start traveling with the dogs. Uh, but it does take commitment and it does um, take a lot of um planning ahead and, and different things have to happen for you to travel successfully with your dog. But uh, yeah, it's, it's enriched our life so much. Yeah. I'm looking forward to reading your book because as I mentioned <laughs> before, I'm taking a, a road trip with my husband and my dogs later this year. So I will be getting your book and I will be reading it. <laughs> and it, I, I appreciate the, the hard work and effort you put into it because I will be the benefactor on the other side of it. <laughs> well, well that's nice. Yeah, thank you. Back to your product is, you know, you, the when you come up with products like this, and this is, you know, why we looked at your product. It was a it was a light on for me because it's like I never thought of that, but it really fills a niche because we we always recommend people give their dogs that mental stimulation or physical stimulation when they can't do it, and you now have a product that you can give them that bully stick. And they could chew on it for an hour or two hours or something like that. And you don't have to worry about coming back. Well, you know, so it's, right. it is a great product. That's just one of those things that, you know, we will have because we do the bully sticks and we don't have to stare at our dogs going, okay, it's down to four inches, pull it, mm -hmm. you know? Right. And, and on another note, for those people that are having the hard times at the RV parks, if they're trying to desensitize their dog to sounds, lights, <clears> situations <throat> going around, this is a really good way to having it out on like right around your area, giving them something that is such a high value chew that they don't care about anything else. And suddenly they're going to be done with it being like, whoa. And that's a really great way to help desensitize them to all of these new new things that happen in the environment so it definitely works for a few different ways i again we did, we did share your website but uh, where else can our customers connect with you so you can find us on instagram and facebook at bow wow lab so it's the at sign b-o-w-w-o-w-l-a-b-s and we at are actually um on youtube as well and we just started our own tiktok account so that'll be awesome. fun <laughs> Great. There'll be some music and sounds with all of the dogs boogieing out with their bully buddies. Ah, that's awesome. How fun. Do you have any new products that you can give us a sneak peek of? Well, I will tell you that in a month, we're coming out with more natural chews. As a nutritionist, I'm a big fan of single ingredient treats. So mm -hmm. we have three new single ingredient treats coming out in July. And then in August, we are coming out with an amazing dental line because it fits right in. Because as a nutritionist, oral health 
I mean, and just for, as a pet parent, right? I brush my dog's teeth every day. Uh, <laughs> the health of the oral microbiome is so important to the overall health of the rest of the body. And so we are coming out with a dental line that's going to give a variety of options for people that want to brush their teeth, brush their dog's teeth. Um, that's going to make it really successful. And then um, a few other things that I can't really talk about yet, but all phenomenal things. Cool. Sounds good. Great. Thank you for that. Yeah, that's awesome. I forgot something that's really important. <laughs> if you use, no, this is a good thing. If you use pet health as a discount code on the website, your viewers will get an extra 10% off any purchase. So P E T H E A L T H, use that um, after you put some products in your cart and you will get 10% off your order. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, thank Great. you. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, I know uh, everybody's going to look for those uh, bully buddies and the great uh, treats and uh, bully sticks that go with it. So thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you for having me. Well, we'll see you soon. <laughs> thank you for watching today. I hope you enjoyed the information. And until next time, keep your paws on the road.